OK, so what I have is the cosine of x divided by 1 plus sine of x plus 1 plus sine of x divided by the cosine of x. So when looking at a problem like this, you know, the main important thing is we see fractions. We're like, oh, I hate fractions. I never want to deal with fractions. And we just need to go back and think about easier fractions. How do we add fractions? We have unlike denominators. So you know, let's say we have you know, 3 fourths plus 2 fifths. Um, so when multiplying or when adding fractions, we need to make sure that we have the same denominator. Therefore, I need to find the least common multiple between 4 and 5. Well, the least common multiple between 4 and 5 is 20. So to get to 20, I need to multiply by 5 on the left side and 4 on the right side. And then make sure that I multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same term, so I'm going to have like terms or like fractions. So therefore, I have 15 over 20 plus 8 over 20, which ends up giving me 23 over 20. So for this problem, I'm going to do the same thing. However, it's a little bit more difficult to look at these and say, what's, you know, what's, my, what's my least common uh, multiple between 1 plus sine of x plus times cosine of x? Well, what you notice is I multiplied my two denominators pretty much by each other to find my least common multiple. That's not always going to provide you least common multiple when dealing with numbers, but it's a great way to always find a multiple when dealing with um, you know, trigonometric terms. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to multiply by my other denominator on both sides. So I multiply by cosine of x on the numerator and denom denominator on the left side. And then I multiply by 1 plus sine of x on the right side. OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to distribute the property through. So cosine times cosine is cosine squared of x. All over, multiply, distribute this through. I'm going to have cosine of x plus cosine of x sine of x plus, now here I'm going to have a binomial times the same binomial, which would be a perfect square. Therefore, I'm going to have 1 squared plus 2 sine of x plus sine squared of x. Now, if you, want to do, if you want to do FOIL to check your answer, that's perfectly fine as well. And then I notice my denominator here is going to be exactly the same. As I distribute the property through, I have cosine of x plus cosine of x sine of x. And you know it's very important that we notice and we make sure that we have the exact same denominator. So now that we have the exact same denominator, what I can do is I can combine my numerators together. So now I have cosine squared of x, and I'm just going to kind of rewrite terms next to each other, times sine squared of x. Since we all have an um, addition, it doesn't, you know, we can commute a property, we can use that. Um, plus 2 sine of x plus 1. And this is going to be all divided by cosine of x plus cosine of x sine of x. OK, so now what we want to do is see, you know, can we simplify this any further? Well, I know I have cosine squared and sine squared. So therefore, I'm going to look into the Pythagorean identities and see what I can do to rewrite those. So sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So therefore, to solve, let's solve for sine squared. So I'll subtract cosine squared of x on both sides. Therefore, I get sine squared of x equals 1 minus cosine squared of x. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 1 minus cosine squared of x in for sine squared of x. And the reason why I want to do that is because I want to see, you know, is this going to cancel out or anything? So let's check it out. When I have cosine squared of x, now when I add in 1 minus cosine squared of x, so when I plug that in for there, you notice um, that now I'm going to have a positive cosine of x and a negative cosine of x. So plus 2 sine of x plus 1. And then again, this is all over my denominator, which is cosine of x plus cosine of x sine of x. OK, so now looking at this, I know that these are going to um, subtract to 0. I have plus 1 plus 1, which is now going to give me 2. And then I'm going to have 2 sine of x. So therefore, my final answer is going to be 2 plus 2 sine of x all over cosine of x plus cosine of x times sine of x. And one thing I look at, I might want to do here, let's see if I factor out a 2. If I factor out a 2, I'm going to be left with 2 times 1 plus sine of x. 
And then over here, if I factor out a cosine of x, I'm going to be left with 1 plus sine of x. Well, therefore, by noticing this, what I notice I could simplify it a little bit further, right? So I'm not exactly done here. So by factoring out a 2 and then factoring out a cosine, you notice that I have now, again, multiplication. So I can now divide these out to 1, which leaves me with 2 over cosine of x. Now, rewriting this as a non-fractional form, I could rewrite this as 2 secant of x. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you simplify by adding two rational trigonometric terms. Thanks.